What's good, ladies and gentlemen? Bitches? Welcome back to the channel once more. We're recording live from the mothership, and we're back for my documentation of the Southampton career mode. We're kicking it off with a game in the Premier League against Burnley FC, a former career mode team of mine. And I just want to say, last episode we uploaded Southampton. I love it. I, love it. I appreciate you guys, man. Y'all came out and dropped some likes. You told me how much you love the series. Nah, I can't, I can't lie. I'm going to act like I don't love it. But I appreciate each and every one of you, man. So here's the deal. I'm going to say, I'm going to tell you the same thing I said in the, 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 the Outlast video I just recorded. Any other video I record today. The way I'm feeling right now, if you guys come out in full force, I'm going to come out in full force. I mean, regardless, I'm going to try my best to keep pumping these out uh, as much as I can at this point, but I mean, again, if, if, every time I see these comments, uh, it does, it does, it does make you want to record a little bit more, even when you wake up and you're feeling a little bit tired, man, you see the comments, you see the love, and you're like, damn, let me go out here and do some of my things, so, um, I mean, go ahead, leave a like on the video, go ahead, tell me how great I am, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm playing, but no, man, go ahead, all the support is appreciated, man. I, I can't believe people still want to watch this series, man. And uh, I'm already excited for the FIFA 20 uh, career mode because I feel like this that, that that's the year they're going to come out and make some big changes and stuff like that. But I'm still loving this career mode. So, I mean, I, 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 I'm wanting to play FIFA uh, 19. And getting into this video, you see, early on in the game, I think it was two minutes in, we did go behind. To a header from Burnley, but we were able to pull it back in this time. Our ball into the box resulted in a goal. A Yazibal, due regardless of type marking, was able to just stick a toe out. And Yazibal really picking up his form now as well. Maybe a little bit slow in the first five or so games uh, in his Southampton career. In, in his Southampton career, but the young Spanish left-sided midfielder is really starting to pick up. We have some, we have some players who are really having a good season. I mean, Yazibal. Scoring his second goal in the Premier League now, so maybe could kick it up into high gear. But generally, just started playing a lot better in recent games. Scoring that free kick in the last episode. Uh, Almiron has been having a great season. Obviously, Birch and Triore playing brilliantly. I did mention the last episode, Sergi Dada uh, starting to play a lot better. But uh, yeah, everyone's getting in the mix. You see the lineup we came out with for this game. Uh, Nick Pope is in goal. Uh, Kevin and Padu. Uh, that's Kevin. Ethan and Padu. Uh, I'm thinking of Kevin and Babu, probably. Uh, Ethan and Padu starting at centre back, and uh, those changes at the back might uh, we might be paying for those because Jeff Hendrick scored another one for Burnley. They went uh, uh, two one up in this one. Defending in general is just generally a little bit poor. I mean, near post nobody nobody attacked it. Came off the post, and Burnley are the first ones to that header right there. And, uh, it's a Yazabal, the goal scorer, who, well, it's a, it's a mix of Yazabal and Lucas Vasquez who let their player get free uh, inside the box. We see just 20 minutes gone, a whole heap of chances, and now Miron's about to create another one as he plays with Charlie Austin. Lucas Vasquez to the right of him, save force from the keeper, and Miguel Almiron is there to tuck it in. 20 minutes played, four goals scored in this game, and this one's looking like it could be a big, action-packed matchup. Uh, in this Premier League encounter, traveling to Turf Moor, Burnley usually don't concede a whole heap of goals, but uh, we picked their pocket right there in the midfield, and a uh, decent save from the keeper, but really didn't get enough of it uh, to push it out wide, and now Miron again scoring an important goal, as he's been doing a lot so far this season, and a crucial one, uh, getting us back into this game early on. And uh, now we can push forward. 33 minutes in, coming forward again. It's Almiron on his left hand side, cut right hand side. Sorry, cuts onto his left foot, and lets one fly. A young Paraguayan international is doing the damn thing right now. I mean, we're 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 somewhat of a big uh, team in this career mode now, but even so, it could be a damn hard job to keep Almiron out of the clutches of the big teams next season, even in even in January. But Having a great season, putting it on a plate this time for a Yazbal, and great save. I mean, I ain't gonna put, I ain't gonna put Yazbal down at all with that finish. It was a good finish. Keeper made a great save right there. Burnley splitting us open. They've got some options inside the box. They go to the back post. Not the best option, but they're still able to squeeze it underneath Nick Pop. Uh, sorry, Nick Pop. I've been calling him Nick Damn Pop. So you, you, y'all ain't gonna tell me that I'm making a mistake. 
It's Nick Pope in the Burnley goal. Angus Gunn is in our goal. And they squeeze it under Angus Gunn again. Uh, and Gunn, you just got to get there, man. You just got to get there. But defensively right now, kind of all over the place. Just had a chance to go 3-2 up ourselves. And now we're 3-2 down. Our Miron cutting onto his left foot again. Finds pierre Mir Hoybier looking for some options. Outstanding pass. Puts it into the back of the net. It's a Yazibal. And right there, we might have just seen the assist of the series. pierre Emile Hoybier has just absolutely... Imagine you got a slice of the finest velvet cake. <laughs> Hoybier has just cut a slice right there. Look at that pass. And let me not take any way, anything away from that finish. But that finish is clinical. Top, top bins right there. Top bins. A yards about me. Same animation that we went for in the last finish. But the keeper, I uh, guess we didn't put enough power on it from the last one. This time, oh, we lifted it over the keeper right into that top corner. Now, finally, can we get ourselves into the lead? Sergi Dada with some space to shoot. And Sergi Dada with that time finish. Boy, I am, I'm enjoying this match. I am enjoying this match. I love I mean, I, hey, listen, guys, I recorded this episode a long time ago now. I mean, it must be, this episode must be at least two months old, bruh. Uh, probably. I mean, I don't know. Who am I to? Like I said, I'm on season four now in terms of actually recording. So these are all pre-recorded. It is like two months old. I don't remember this match, but boy, do I like it. In off of the post, what a strike. Right there from Sergi Dada, the Spanish central midfielder, really coming into his own this season. And we finally take the lead in this game for the first time against Burnley. But the defense is still looking a little bit suspect. Ball whipped into the box. Header right there. Who's that? Eric Dyer? Jeff Hendrick? Angus Gunn stepping up and making a great save. I think it was Eric Dyer right there. And Burnley really have a good team. In this career mode, uh, but they, they're just uh, really not doing well, regardless of how strong their team is. And end of the match right there. We came from a goal down three times in this game to eventually secure the three points right there. Yazabal getting himself the man of the match before. Oh, maybe not. I, I thought when they showed the player at the end, that means he's going to man of the match. Sergi Dardo with the man of the match. 9.3 rating. Getting himself the winning goal. And now we head into Champions League football. And we're traveling to Ukraine. Never an easy place to go to right here. Shakhtar Dinesh is the opponent. And you can already see we've got a stronger lineup out here. Obviously, still suffering with the injury uh, to Bertha Traore. Right? So, a little bit of a uh, rotation being being applied right here. Nathan Redmond getting himself a start again in this game. Shakhtar Dinesh squad. they got Kwakayori up front. they got Rikitski also up there. On the bench, no one really looked like he coming to change the game. Kovalenko starting at, at, at Cam, Stepanenko, defensive midfield, and Tyson. Those I would probably see, uh, say, say are uh, uh, danger men. But uh, I don't really know much of the, of the Shakhtar Donetsk squad outside of that nowadays. Um, but yeah, uh, we get, get an opportunity to look at our lineup about to come up. But like I said in the last episode, the, the Champions League is... Uh, We've not exactly been cruising through it so far this season. We do need to start picking up consistent results in the Champions League. Uh, yeah, yeah, we, we need to we need to make sure we are consistent and get into that uh, knockout stage because that is a tournament we really want to, if we can, improve on from last season. We've done brilliant last season, but this is the lineup. Hesse is leading the line. Nathan Redmond on the left, Vasquez on the right. Hoybier, Valverde, and Lamina in the midfield three. Chilwell, Orban, Klein. And Hoot in the defense. And obviously, Ariola and Gold. Chilwell picking the ball up in an unfamiliar position. Central midfield right there. And laying it off to Federico Valverde. He forces a good save out of the Shakhtar Donetsk keeper. But uh, never never really uh, too much of a problem for him. Pretty much straight down his throat. Pause if necessary. Pause. May I repeat? Pause if necessary. Hoybier, you can see we have a lot of players forward in this game. And Shakhtar defending a lot. A lot of players back. Hoybier is able to get in behind and feed it to Hesse Rodriguez. If Hesse just made that run to the to, to the goal line, uh, easy tapping for him. Didn't do that though. Wesley Hoot winning the ball in a very good position, attacking position. Hesse has a man inside. It's Nathan Redmond lets it roll across his body. And unfortunately, the finish does not match the build up right there. Good idea for him to let it roll across his body. But wasn't able to get his foot around the ball. Now Shakhtar come forward into our box. A few options, pull it back to the best one, and a great save 
from Alphonse Ariola before we eventually get the ball out. 43 minutes just before halftime arrives. Lucas Vasquez whips it into the box. Right onto the head right there of Federico Valverde. There are a few options right there underneath the ball. Valverde somehow won it. And just over the crossbar. Can't get too much closer right there. Good header from a player who's not known for his head and ability. But we are applying the pressure right here in Ukraine. Hoybia has the ball. Plays it to Heske. I say Heske. <laughs> Redmond with a huge opportunity. Missing the target right there after the assist from Heske. Oh, man. Oh, that's not good enough right there from Nathan Redmond. Having the opportunity to put us into the lead. And that's a chance we need to take. Getting a win at Ukraine, everybody knows. Getting a win. Going to Shakhtar in the Champions League is never easy. But we are playing brilliant football right there. It comes back to Hal Vasquez. And on the rebound, he puts it wide. We are playing some great football. Come off the post after deflecting. And Heske... Hes uh, why am I calling it? What's, what's happening? And Lucas Vasquez... The second attempt was deflected as well. So brilliant defending from uh, Shakhtar as a whole. Now they have the opportunity to try and steal it from us. And Alphonse Ariola is awake. Again, not falling asleep right here despite the lack of action for him. And somehow, somehow, this game ended nil-nil. I mean, I, don't, I do not know. Uh, again, don't remember playing this match quite some time ago. But uh, very entertaining to watch. I mean... <laughs> I feel like I'm a viewer right now watching this, and I feel like I, I understand why y'all love my career most, because this is entertaining as hell. Uh, got that good football, but now we're back into the Premier League. Leicester City, top scoring team in the league. We are still 29 goals scored. Uh, very, very good amount of goals to, to uh, scored this early into the campaign. Uh, but this is how Leicester line up. Danny Simpson, Hughes, Bellinwani. A few players uh, still in this team from the Famous Leicester City squad that we had uh, in our career mode. Players like Fuchs and Benalwane, Simpson, of course. Uh, great times I had with Leicester City. But, uh, unfortunately, a lot of them players have left the squad. A lot of them players have moved on. The team has changed quite some bit. But this is how we lined up. A lot of players, again, uh, the, the, the same back line from that Champions League match. Lamina stays again also, but Dada comes in. Midfield, uh, attack front free kind of. Vasquez, Almiron, and Yazabal. And Hesse... Leads the line once more. So, again, I mean, I, a lot of people, this again, like, it's show, kind of showing why I don't really understand. Look at that pass as well. I don't really understand why so many people like to have a, quote, reserve team. <laughs> and then, like, each match, they just completely swap out 11. Like, you really don't need to do I've never understood why people do that. Like, it's not even, it's not ever something that happens in real life either, like, I don't know where people have got this idea from that you need to completely swap out your whole starting eleven each match. Like, no, you can play the same player two games in a row. It is possible. Uh, but, yeah, uh, coming forward and a really well-worked goal right here. I do remember that one, actually. Hesse Rodri. I, I mean, I do remember that one because it was a beautiful goal. Like, I always remember the beautiful goals that I scored. Uh, just well-worked. So, like, I mean... Little things like I like little things like that. I, the little backdoor run that Almiron's made round here. I mean, kind of a backdoor run, and then pulled it across, and then back across where the keeper's coming from. Beautiful swept home from Rodriguez. You know, he didn't smash it. He did not barely even come off the ground. I love finishes like that, man. You just stroke it home, sweep it into that corner, and now we are in the lead. And hopefully, we can keep a clean sheet in this game. I don't remember what the score was, so hopefully, I'm saying hopefully we can keep a clean sheet. And look a bit solid defensively. And just have generally a comfortable victory in this episode. Now, Dart, that's got to be a goal. That's got to be a goal. That's got to be a goal. Sergi Dart, that is really stepping it up. Two beautiful strikes in one episode now. And we double our lead. 40 minutes gone in the game. Southampton, two goals up at the King Power Stadium. We are looking, feeling good, performing. As soon as he got all that space and he was at that angle, a player like Sergi Dart with the time finishing. That's going into the back of the net. Ah, look at the way that's bent. Started outside the post, finished just inside. And now, right now, comfortable. Into the second half now. Can't be making mistakes like that, Willie. Uh, Leicester coming forward. Slimani denied by a good block from Morban, but unfortunately it dropped straight to uh, Isma Slimani. And he, he shuffled his feet well, but the finish in the end, he wasn't able to get that inside the post. Like Dada was able to get his. 
Looks like we're on a counter attack now. Almiron has a player and it's a yards about running down the left hand side. Only player ahead of him is Jesse Rodriguez. What's he going to opt to do? Comes inside. A yards about. Still going inside. A yards about on his weaker foot. Putting it over the bar, unfortunately. But we did. I'm happy with that. Clean sheet. Nice, comfortable victory. Nice 2 0. Leicester only had uh, two real chances in this game. I mean, there were somewhat clear chances. We need to work on that defensively. That, that's been our goal. Uh. Coming into this third season was to shore up the defense, and we've done it up to this point. We had a slip, of, a little slip at some points, but we're doing well. Sergi Dada again for the second time in this episode, man of the match, and Mauricio Pochettino getting the manager of the month for Spurs, who is still most likely top of the league. Then, if he's getting a manager of the month award, I guess they're they're still top of the league. Coming into the Carabao Cup now, up against Everton. Strong Everton squad. They got Romagnoli in there. Yeah, Yerimina. They got Zobnin. Meza Urzel, remember they signed Serge Nabry. Everton have a really strong squad. They got Gerald Moreno up front. I genuinely don't understand why they aren't doing better. Like, I would think with a team like that. I mean, I guess certain players. Certain players just aren't rated that well on FIFA and just don't perform that well. But this is the squad we came out with. Carabao Cup, two change. Few young players again making it in there. Uh, let's see if they can step up. Sasha Fisher is the main one on that right hand side. Nice young player to keep an eye on. And Pardu starting defensive midfield in this game. And then we got Kema and Benyarek playing as the defensive two. And Pardu right here, again, like I just mentioned, playing defensive midfield. So we'll see how he can do. He finds Valverde in an ocean of space. Trying to get that driven uh, low shot into that bottom corner. I love those driven shots uh, when they go in in this game. It's beautiful. And Pardew rising well to get that corner clear. But it falls to Serge Nabry who bends one. And I, I do remember that. I mean, right before he shot, I knew that was going in because I had flashbacks. I had nightmares. That's the type of goal where you can see you start to wake up in a cold sweat each night. Just remembering that goal. Like, oh my god, no. Oh, finesse. <laughs> oh, finesse. No, no. Yeah, uh, I tried to get him off the ball, but I guess, uh, I think it was Valverde. Just wasn't strong enough. It wasn't Valverde. It was Almiron. It makes sense why he wasn't strong enough. And he, be that's, that's, that's better than, that's better than Sergi Dardas, to be honest. I'm going to have to step up and admit that. And Marco Silva is happy with how that one's gone in. So we're down in this Carabao Cup fixture. Gerard Moreno playing it across to Gilfi Sigerson, who lays it off to Ozil. Forces the save out of Angus Gunn. And we are under pressure. Right now against Everton, we need to step it up. We've got to get something, make it happen. But Everton, again, like I said, they got good squads. They're playing some good football in this game. They have a lot of threats in their team, man. Especially going forward, man. They got some threats. They're, 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 they're problem. 38 minute in the game. Not going to be too many more chances to get a goal in this first half. Punched well by Jordan Pickford, I guess, is in there going. Volleyed right there by Hakimi, I believe. Yeah, Hakimi. With a nice effort, still trying to secure his first goal for Southampton. That would have been a hell of a way to get it. Almiron sees Sasha Fischer running down this right-hand side. The young German taking the shot, forcing the save out of the keeper. Still trying to get ourselves back into this game. But right now, it's looking like we are the team to score if any more goals go in. Almiron again, cutting onto his left foot, striking it. And just wide of the post. If, if we're going to get ourselves back into this game, surely it's going to come through. Our mirror one way or another, wherever it's a goal or an assist or a hockey assist, whatever way. We get a ball into Charlie Austin now. Turns, looking for an option. Charlie Austin holding on to the ball still, pulls it back to Sasha Fisher, lays it off to Almiron, and on the right foot this time, Miguel Almiro. I feel like, look at the way I'm popping when these goals go in. I, I love it. It's coming out of nowhere. But unfortunately, I mean, we wasn't able to get the winning goal. And uh, look at that penalty from Charlie Austin. Jesus, it did go to penalties. Gerard Moreno stepping up to try and take it away. And I'm going to give somewhat of a spoiler for this game. If I remember correctly, uh, penalties in this game, they, they, they are shit. Uh, we, we didn't go through. <laughs> I think we lost. We missed every other penalty that I took, whether it went wide or saved. And the problem is... Now, in this game, when it comes to penalties, and I've said this time and time again, I've said this from FIFA last year, I've said it from FIFA two years ago, nothing's changed. If the keeper dives the right way when you take a penalty, it 100% of the time is saved. One, maybe not one, maybe 98% of the time. Like, you are very, very rarely going to take a penalty where the keeper dives the right way and it's just out of reach. Like, you just, it's just not 
possible. And it's ridiculous because it, then it doesn't matter how good your penalty is. It's just a it's just a guessing game. Uh, which is why you saw me miss those penalties and put them wide because I'm really just trying to put them well out of the goalkeeper's reach because I know that if they dive the right way, they're going to save it. So I'm trying to say, well, hey, if I put it right top bin, surely you don't save it. But then eventually I end up putting it too far to the side and, uh, and, and you know, bad things happen. But Premier League table at the end of the episode, we are back on top and we still have a game in hand over Tottenham. So really and truthfully, I don't know how Pochettino won manager of the month. It should have gone to me because I got us back onto the top of the table and we had that game in hand. So really, I feel like I'm robbed. I would like that to be reviewed by the FA. And uh, yeah, get that done. Like, you know, I'm, 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 I'm not happy with that. But hope you guys enjoyed this. Like I said, if you guys go ham on the like button, if you guys keep, keep, I mean, just, you know, I mean, it's that support. I will go ham. If you guys go ham, I'll go ham, basically. I mean, I... I I, it's it's 11.30 now in the morning as I'm recording this. And I've already recorded four videos today. That's how I'm feeling. So I'm back. Don't worry about that. I'm back. But if you want me back and, and even more, uh, what's the word? Prolific? Let me make that happen for you guys. Let me make that happen. But I uh, love you guys. Make sure you have a great day. Make sure you guys prosper. Uh, just do do your thing, man. Do Do your thing. And, and achieve at the highest level. For now, we're out. Peace.